What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. We're talk about Screen 5 again today. The new Total Film Magazine came out today with, of course, the, all the tidbits that we were looking forward to regarding Screen 5. Shout out to Kay for sending me these screen caps over on Twitter. Uh, if you guys want to see what I'm referencing in this video today, I guess you can message me over on Twitter or Instagram. But basically, jumping into the stuff I want to talk about, it's just on the thumbnail, we'll be talking about Gail Weathers, and we'll be talking about Nev Campbell and her thoughts on the upcoming film. So, Courtney Cox did go ahead and confirm in this magazine that Gail Weathers does indeed have a morning show now. She's working on a morning show. She was asked, where do we find Gail now? And she answered, Gail now works on a morning show. She has the respect of a job where she gets to call the shots and has an audience that is turning in just for her. She's in a better place as far as her professional life goes. I don't think that personally she's in a great place, but you know, she's very selfish. So I'm not, sh so I'm not sure she's ever going to be the one to find happiness in that way. So professionally she's happy, but personally she has some things going on of course because it looks like her and dewey of course are no longer together they divorce dewey is still living in woodsboro div arquette actually does bring that up in this magazine he tells us that we catch up with dewey it's 10 years later he's still in woodsboro we know that uh based off of the featurette that came out dewey is going to be drawn into wanting to help these kids after sam comes to them for help or comes to him for help as far as gail this tidbit of news from Courtney Cox herself confirming what many of us were already talking about previously many weeks ago. This is exciting to know just because of the fact that we know in the fourth film, she was in sort of a rut professionally where she just wasn't having the same success that she was having back when the Woodsboro killings were first starting off. She was more so trying to revitalize as, as they were putting in her tarnished brand and she had writer's block i think we saw a glimpse of that in screen four yeah she had writer's block because she was sitting on the on the lap on the keyboard typing she has no idea what the effing write or something like that so it's nice to know that she is in a place where she has found something to keep her relevant that's out that's going outside of just death and mayhem related to ghost face and the woodsboro murders of course that stuff that sh i'm sure is still what people associate with her but it's nice to know that Gail Weathers has seemingly I guess found something to keep her name relevant in today's pop culture she looks like I guess she has her own show where it's located at, I guess that's something she did not tell us but from what we were told before it looks like this I, I guess the show that she's working on where she might be at is New York she's not living in Woodsboro either the only person living in Woodsboro at this point in time is Dewey so as far as like what Nev Campbell thinks about the upcoming film, she was very pleased with it. She has seen the film and is confident that it will satisfy screen fans who have waited 10 years for a new installment. She thinks it's terrifying. She thinks it's exhilarating. She says, I think it's very exciting. I think it's funny. I think we've met all the bullet points that the audience would expect and hope for from these movies. You definitely get all of it. I don't think audiences are going to be disappointed. These guys were so committed to doing it right. And I think West would, West would be very, very proud. So just to hear that from her, I mean, obviously, of course, I don't think she would come out and say, you know, they did awful. They, they did a terrible job. I don't think she would come out and say that. Now, how we perceive it compared to what she's saying, of course, that'll be a completely different story. As far as like her wording here. It having all these things that makes me excited and confident because I know just going off of the initial trailer, some people are already in the mindset that, you know, they've dropped the meta humor or the meta commentary. They've dropped the humor aspect. It's more straightforward horror. It's going to be more brutal. It's going to be more dark and gritty. It's not going to have the things that were woven into the DNA of the previous installments. And, you know, based off of the first trailer, I did enjoy those darker vibes, but the first thing that I was thinking right after I saw the trailer was that, you know, they did this right. They have done this right. They're not showing us this hokey uh, comedic vibe that we know is woven into the fabric of these films. They're being more straightforward and highlighting the more darker, terrifying aspects of it, which is that there is a killer out here. This is a whodunit. It's a murder mystery. We need to find out what's going on. There's a lot of things going on with these characters as it relates to their personal lives, their trauma, them trying to overcome said trauma. Now throwing it into the mix, you have a crazed person out on the loose trying to take you out, trying to take your friends out, trying to take your sister out. 
And then, of course, you have all the legacy cast coming in to help these new group of kids. So I feel like them highlighting the darker aspects of the film, primarily for the original trailer that we got. There's nothing wrong with that. Saving all of those little good things that we know help make Scream scream for the actual film experience that you get to have in a couple weeks when it releases in January. I think that's right. I think they're doing it right. So there actually are some comments that they had about the 2022 film and how it will toy with conventions and be updated for a new decade. Uh, that fun, scary, emotional mix that we talk about a lot that really is for us to scream tone while also being subversive and pushing boundaries and making you uncomfortable in what seems like a safe environment. And that's what Ben Nelly had to say. He said, like, it seems like a bowl of ice cream. And then you're like, oh, there's effing razors in here. There's no safety net with a scream movie. So again, making the comments about while the first trailer was perhaps a more straightforwardly somber affair that you didn't expect, everyone assures us that this entry does contain the saga's trademark quips and cleverness. It's scary, but it still got the humor that the original one had. That's what David Arquette said. There's a lot of meta stuff in this film, and there's a lot of other films that have come in the past few years. Horror films that have elevated the genre that they can reference, and social media has exploded. So... You know, like I said before, there's so many different things that have gone on since Scream 4. Horror, I would say, is more in a place where you don't need a movie like Scream to come around and be the savior for it. You're, you're not we're not in a horror rut like many people would argue we were in in the 90s. If anything, we're in like, I would say another golden age of horror. We're in the golden age of horror movies. Every horror movie that comes out. It's not just always a slash because I know the big three, Michael, Freddie and Jason, they were slashers were, I would say, dominating horror. That's all people were associating horror with because of how successful those three properties were, those franchises. Now we're in a place where we have so many different avenues being explored in this genre. So they have a lot to work with as it relates to commentating on things in the horror genre. But let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notification, and miss a video. In the description, I have links to my social media accounts, my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, and let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.